Hi, welcome back to my channel and to another journal with me. This is a continuation of the magazine journal that I was working on before. Um, I've made some progress that wasn't recorded because my, um, my phone, I, I hit a button um, and turned it off. I have a little um, button to, to make it start filming and I accidentally set something on it and made it stop filming. Um, so anyway, right now I'm just gathering stuff to put into my journal. This is the first time that I've done the magazine journal. I normally, or I had been using a traveler's notebook insert. And before that, I usually used a moleskin, mole, moleskin, I think that's how you say it. Um, and I was pretty consistently chronological, if that makes sense. Um, sometimes I'd get a little bit behind and so I'd go in and rather than do like a daily thing, it would be kind of a wrap up of the week or the month. With this um, journal, I've just been all over the place and I started it while I was on vacation uh, with my husband and didn't end up getting a whole lot done because I was mostly um, prepping the magazine. And so then I got kind of behind and so now I'm just, I'm just slapping stuff in here. Sort of, kind of in order or at least grouped. Um, by time periods but not so much um, this is really is a junk journal I would say a junk scrapbooky type journal memory keep um, what do they call that smash book I guess it would be a good it's a smash book a junky smash book so anyway that there is the calendar from um, Daphne's garden I got it at the end of the year and I haven't actually written in it, used it, but I love the pages and I pull pages out. And I use the, um, the little note sheets to journal on, to write my grocery lists. Um, some of the numbers I will cut out and use, I just use all of it. Um, I haven't actually used it as a planner, um, more as a embellishments that sometimes have dates written on them. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, um, right now I'm going down a menu from where we ate while we were on vacation at the coast. And it's not a fancy menu or anything. It's just regular paper that they printed. Um, so, you know, nothing really noteworthy. I'm just using it as a base for this page here. And um, you can see I tore the menu a little bit crooked so I'm going to stick this washi tape. I really love this washi tape but it's super not sticky so I really have to cover it in glue to get it to work. It also tears easily like not the kind of way you want it to tear but the long way where it, you don't get the full width of the tape. Um, now I'm applying clear gesso. I love this stuff. It This is um, this specific brand. It's Art Basics I think. Um, it's so smooth and it's great to um, use in your journals, especially the ones that have thin pages like a Moleskine or a Traveler's Notebook, because um, you can add some watercolor elements to your journal and um, it won't just soak into your paper. It'll, it, it has a bit of tooth, but it's not as toothy or as gritty as some gessos, especially the other clear gessos I've tried have been really, um, it almost like, sandpaper. I don't really like that. Um, this here is from the Fear, Fearless Flyer from Trader Joe's. They send out ads. They always have really quirky pictures and I like to use them in my journals. And so I just kind of tore it up and stuck it in there. And this is, I have a lot of stuff. Um, new stuff, old stuff, new old stuff. But what ends up happening is whatever is in arms reach is what I use and I may have the perfect something across the room or in a drawer or a file but chances are if I can't reach it from my chair I'm probably not going to use it uh, not at this time so that's why beforehand I kind of was pulling all this stuff together um, stuff that I have stashed in boxes and stuff um, I'm not super organized and I started 
at the beginning of the video I had some pouches that were that are kind of a a stiff vinyl maybe um, I got them at the dollar store for a dollar each um, super cheap and they have a snap and I started just putting stuff in them from the week um, or the month or whatever and I had one that was in my suitcase um, when I went on vacation and then another one that's was like from stuff here that we did just around the house um, and I pull from there and so that's what I was doing um, now I'm just really trying to get my groove I guess um, I haven't had a chance to really art in a while it's been more organizing and cleaning and I was working on a I took a class or a I guess it was a class or a challenge and it was um, wild 30 bullet journaling on um, planners gone wild and so I was kind of busy with that and sorting my craft room getting rid of stuff that I'm not going to use getting rid of getting stuff together that maybe I will use if it's within reach so I'm kind of behind on this and on inspiration so anyway I really like these stamps um, I think this is the first time that I've used them they're Tim Holtz and they they're um, kind of a fun foam they feel like they're made out of fun foam sort of but they're nice and big so I'm just kind of layering elements on this page um, and this is going to be for Mother's Day I, and I decided to do the, the S in a different color to kind of um, pull that pink from that stencil in. Kind of give it a cohesiveness. So now I have these small stamps and I do day, because it was Mother's Day, day underneath. And these just quite, they're not quite what I wanted. I needed something, I wanted something smaller and um, different, a different font. But I, I think I wanted it to be bolder, and it's not. So uh, for now, I just left it. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do with it um, down the road. But for this journaling session, I just left it as it is and decided that when the perfect thing, um, when I saw it, I'd know it and I would just... Um, go back and go over it or redo it so um, let's see what else <laughs> I'm still trying so that was a picture taken on Mother's Day um, of me with my youngest son and I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do I'm just I don't know what to do um, so and I think this stress of being doing a journal with me and then a voiceover after the fact is that you're watching yourself and you're trying to remember what you did and not be all like oh and then I glued a piece of paper down when it's pretty obvious that I glued a piece of paper down um, that is a vintage cookbook uh, I like to collect those and use them in my art um, and uh, some of them were given to me um, after my grandmother passed away uh, a lot of them were she especially those um, fundraiser cookbooks she collected those I have a lot of those and unless it was written in by her you know or has special notes in, in there from her I like to use them in my art um, I would use it in my art if it had her writing on it but I would definitely focus on her writing not so much on the cookbook itself but um, anyway so that one was uh, a garden book and I was trying to find a way to highlight uh, my roses and I'm from Texas, and um, my roses grew like crazy in Texas, and they grow grow well here in Portland. We're called the Rose City or City of Roses or something, but there is a it's wet here. It's it's really wet <laughs> for a lot of the year. So I'm dealing with things that I never worried about in Texas with my roses, like mildew and and um, like kind of soggy fungusy things from the amount of time it stays wet. Um, so I was really excited when they bloomed really pretty even though the foliage foliage 
was looking a little sorry. So anyway, that all of that to say that I thought this page from that garden book would be perfect to showcase my roses. Um, that May, uh, that page up there, if you remember, I was started May in a traveler's notebook and then decided I wanted to do the magazine journal. So I took apart um, the little bit that I had done in May and um, have been using it in the chat in the, this notebook, the um, magazine journal. So I just decided to stick that calendar from May in there. Um, the giraffe has no real significance except that I really like giraffes and that was that baby giraffe that everyone was waiting forever to be born and I thought it was cute. I don't even remember what its name was. Was it like Daisy or something? Or maybe that's just what I would have named it if it were my baby giraffe. I would have named it Daisy. Even if it was a boy, it would have been Daisy. Um, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, I like giraffes, so I wanted to put it in there because it makes me happy. And now I'm going to um, I'm going to use that picture of myself with my youngest, and I'm going to make a flap. I'm going to put some lined paper that I've um, kind of stained with watercolor and stuff on the back for journaling, and I'm just going to make it a, a open, like a little flop open. So that's spoiler alert because it looks like I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I do, and that's what it is. So that paper is out of a journal that, um, it was one a cheap journal that was uh, spiral bound, I believe, and the paper is super nice. Like, I love the way my pen glides across the paper, and I have a ton of those. Um, because I've journaled my whole life, not always artistically, but I've always journaled. And I would get to the last 10 pages or so, and sometimes I could really get going, you know, if I'm writing. And so I usually don't finish it because it's like, I'm going to start it on the new month, or I don't want to run out of room. And so the last 10 pages of all these journals are empty, so I tore them out, and... Um, tea dye them, coffee dye them, splash some paint on them or whatever, and I use them um, to make lined backgrounds or, or just to add to my journal pages. I do like writing on lines or on a grid because it does help my handwriting stay tidier. I have pretty good handwriting, but sometimes it's not as good. Isn't it weird how you like you have a good handwriting day, kind of like you have a good hair day? Um, I definitely have good handwriting days where I'm like, whoa, that's awesome handwriting. And then other days where I'm like, eh, maybe I'll just type that out and print it in there. Um, but lines do help. So This was another piece I took out of the Traveler's Notebook. Because the Traveler's Notebook was a junky, um, kind of a junky, funky, vintage-y, journal that I made myself using old papers, flashcards, stuff like that that I sewed together. It was really cool and I enjoyed doing it but I was ready for a change so I took it apart and I've been using the pieces in this journal. And so that was a flashcard and a movie ticket and then some um, handwriting paper from one of my kids schoolwork when they were little. So the kids got me this little baby Groot, bobblehead Groot for Mother's Day and I'm trying to figure out, oh, somebody brought me pie. It's my son's birthday. Um, and we had lemon meringue pie. Um, so anyway, <laughs> they bought me this baby Groot and I really liked it. So I want to put it in there and I kind of, I wanted to keep the whole, um, that whole piece, but I just wasn't finding a way that I liked it. And I, I did want to keep it in this section because I already had started June on the next page, I think, or the page after that. So I really need to wrap up May and stuff and keep it in there. And that's when I decided to kind of fussy cut them and stick them in there. And um, I like the way that, I, it, that it ultimately turned out. And I did try and peel some of the cardboard backing off to make it thinner. It seems to stick better too. Sometimes, it just depends on the glue you use. 
some glues don't like the rough cardboard. It's like it just wants to, it's too thirsty or something. So those are bingo daubers. Uh, or, well, I guess they're technically, now they're called dot art. But when we were kids, we always used them for bingo. But these are sold usually with the kids' crafts. I got mine at Michael's. I use a coupon, and I get a pack of, I don't know, 6, 8, 10, something like that. And um, they're really nice. That one has a sparkle um, finish to it. So I have a, a set that's sparkle and a set that's not. And I have the... Um, Mine are not the primary colors. They're like the, the kind of the pastels. And I use those um, kind of like the way other people use the Tim Holtz Distress Stains. And they are pretty comparable, in my opinion. I like them. I use them a lot. And they're nice to write over. Um, they dry really nice and smooth, and, and you can write over them really easy. All right, well, thanks for watching. That was the end of it. Um, stay tuned, and part, well, part, another part will follow. Thanks, bye.